Hello Electroheads, let's talk electric scooters, the Xiaomi M365 in particular. A top seller with a new wave of electric commuters which takes the accolade as the best selling scooter in the world right now. It's also one of the cheapest. In the UK right now you can buy a Xiaomi M365 for as little as £300. What? That's really cheap, but is it too cheap? Can a budget e-scooter like the Xiaomi M365 really serve as a commuter scooter? Well, I took one out for the week to find out. So let's talk about portability. But first, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss any of our new videos. And if you guys wanna get exclusive content, make sure you check out our Patreon page in the link below. The first thing I notice about the scooter is just how easy it is to take out and about with me. It is so much easier than say a bike. I'm a cyclist, so carrying my bike around is such a pain. But with this scooter, you just fold it up and you can go wherever you need to be. The Xiaomi weighs in at 12.5 kilograms, folds up into a neatly compact carryable. You can take it on public transport into work, ride it to the pub and carry the damn thing in. It allows for so much flexibility. I cannot stress enough, this kind of portability is genuinely game-changing. However, please be warned, these scooters are not waterproof. Unbelievable! I was riding the scooter back home one night when the heavens opened up on me, and then I had to fold it down and take it on the tube. Next up, let's talk about handling. It is incredibly beginner friendly. It's very similar to a bike, except now instead of pedaling, you're just effortlessly gliding into work. At first, it does feel a little bit weird standing instead of sitting down and pedaling, but you get used to that pretty quickly. But I think that was one thing that I really noticed when I started riding a scooter. I was like, I'm just, I'm just like so tall. One thing I wasn't so keen on is actually the size of the platform where you put your feet on the scooter. I have slightly bigger than average average size women's feet. It's a size eight. I have to say the girls were fighting for room so if there was one thing that maybe we could uh, get an improvement on it's just let's just get a bigger platform guys that'd be great. We have to use the takeaway you refer to your feet as the girls. That's the one. <laughs> I need to give them names next. Another biggie for me is that there is no suspension, nothing. The pneumatic tires give you a little bit of cushioning, but really it doesn't go a long way. Now this is often the thing that separates the cheap electric scooters to the expensive ones. And speaking of which, if you want to check out a scooter with more suspension that's definitely worth a watch, click the link above to see Jack's review on the E2 GT. Next up, let's talk about speed. So with this e-scooter, it maxes out at 15.5 miles per hour, which I found to be an issue pretty quickly. I don't believe electric scooters should be ridden on the pavements because that is just far too quick around pedestrians. However, when you're on the road, 15.5 miles per hour really doesn't feel like much. And it gets to the point when you're riding along, you're just trying to have a nice ride, but most of the time cars are coming up behind you, they're overtaking, and not just cars, buses, lorries, it can become quite an unpleasant experience pretty quickly. 90% of the time, my thumb was on the throttle wishing I was going faster. And do not get me started about when you hit a slight incline. I'm talking slight here. I'm fairly light, so I cannot imagine what it must be like for somebody, say, like Jack, who's a six foot two guy, to get on one of these scooters. Six foot five. <laughs> God, are you six five? Wow. Are you six five? Oh my God. Jack's, Jack's a tall guy. Okay, anyway, so back to the point. The point I'm trying to make here is if I'm switching to an electric motor, I wanna feel like I've made an upgrade and it just doesn't feel like that with the Xiaomi M365. Performance wise, it just feels incredibly limited. And after a very short space of time of owning one of these scooters, you're gonna wish that you pay just a little bit more money for something with a little bit more performance because inevitably you're gonna have more fun and it's gonna get you to further places quicker. And also, fun police, it's safer as well. Next up, let's talk about mileage. How how far can this thing go? Well, it claims to be capable of around 18 miles of range, which is perfectly acceptable for the average city commuter. On full charge, I was able to ride to and from my office on fairly flat roads, which is about 13 miles in total, 
with a bit of battery left over. The charge time takes about 4.5 hours, so if you do need a reduce between rides because of a longer commute, you can fold it down, leave the charge next to your desk and have it ready for the return journey home. Finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about convenience. This was a really big thing for me. You can get ready at home. You don't need to think about bringing a change of clothes and all that other stuff. You can just rock up to work and get straight into the office. And that is inevitably one of the biggest perks of having an electric ride. It basically does all the work for you. I'm actually considering buying one now. So there you have it. After a week of riding the Xiaomi M365, I can tell you that it certainly was a journey of enlightenment and a lot of impatience. I can see why they've been flying off the shelves. Of course, that price tag is undeniable. However, it does come with its disadvantages. The Xiaomi M365 is adequate for beginner riders, but who wants adequate? In a very short space of time, once you've seated yourself comfortably into scoot life, you'll be wishing that you paid a little bit more money for something that was just more powerful, was safer, way better on the roads, and could just keep up with traffic. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments what e-scooter you guys are rocking, if you agree with my review, or if you think I'm just plain wrong. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon.